Imagine you're watching a basketball game on TV. You know the basic rules, but you don't know what's been going on recently with teams like the Lakers and the Mavericks, who I learned today are also a team. Sorry to all the fans. By listening to the sports commentators, you might learn some things that put the game into context. A star captain has shifted from being a strong team player to taking a lot of long shots without passing to open teammates, for example. During the game, the commentator is paying attention to even the smallest details and to what happened in past games. By catching all of that, she's able to give a clear recap during and afterward about what the game meant. The team isn't responding well to a new coach, for instance, or they're facing very long odds of making it to the playoffs. Rhetorical analysis is a term for looking at a text carefully to figure out what it really means as well as what it wants to accomplish and whether it's successful. With rhetorical analysis, we slow down, read multiple times, and pick out details and evidence that help us make sense of the text, which can end up feeling like the close analysis that a sports commentator has to do to really understand the overall story of a game. Rhetorical analysis takes care and practice, but anyone can do it, even if we don't know the difference between a layup and a half-court shot. Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Zarka, and this is Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition. We've got some other episodes on key parts of rhetorical analysis, including elements like context, audience, strategies, and purpose. While we'll talk through those four topics here too, rhetorical analysis will make the most sense with those episodes in our toolkit. As we said, rhetorical analysis essentially means looking through a piece of writing carefully to determine what it means for its specific audience and how it's accomplishing its purpose, or maybe even accidentally doing something else. While analyzing a text, we'll look at everything from the specific wording the writer chose to the type of website the piece was published on, in order to create our own interpretation. Rhetorical analysis seems pretty abstract till we're in the thick of it. So let's dive into a situation we might find ourselves in at the workplace. As we go, we're going to try our hand at identifying key details that would help us analyze the message. Just like the basketball player who misses an open teammate might benefit from some external perspective, we're going to talk through some of the details and influences that help us evaluate the text purpose more clearly. So let's say the product development team at a software company receives a message from the CEO in a calendar invite to whom it may concern. Multiple clients have expressed their displeasure with the delays on version 3.3 of the new 3D design app. They believe that the timeline as originally agreed upon was adequate and they have stated that the lateness has cost them more than $100,000 in lost revenue already, as well as hundreds of work hours as they scramble to retrain their teams on other software. Continued delays jeopardize the success of our 3D design software line and may cause me to reconsider the new department. In this meeting, we'll discuss how to overcome our remaining roadblocks and deliver our top objectives in no less than two months. Please come with strategies that you personally will be able to implement to meet this goal. Looking forward to getting this resolved, Yvonne. To start a rhetorical analysis, try writing or typing context, audience, strategies, and purpose on a page. We'll use this document to organize our thoughts about the details and influences we uncover in this message. Context includes a lot of the factors that impact why this message was written. To spot it, we'll look at the situation around the message in both time and place. If we're insiders at this company, we can both pull from past experiences of what led up to this message and also notice things in the message itself. Everything from delays to the timeline as originally agreed upon is referencing the time part of context. And the place of the message is at work where other factors compete for the spotlight. The other tabs and apps open on a software engineer's screen, for example or the other projects the development team is wrangling. Yvonne's consideration of context likely included the knowledge that this message was falling into a particularly stressed environment. As team members, we might see this note and begin interpreting because we understand these elements of context. We might think that Yvonne's request is beyond impossible with too many delays to ever reach the two months deadline mentioned. Or we might feel like this arrived at exactly the right moment to help the team get out of this mess. Another contextual element is the interface and medium used for the message. The medium is the way the message was communicated, while the interface is the place where the audience and writer meet. 
though medium and interface are definitely linked and can sometimes be talked about as parts of the same thing. Here, the medium is the event invite description and the interface is the calendar app or email program itself. The interactive nature of the calendar invite interface could impact the reader by making them miss the message altogether. If they click yes on the invite without looking for the description, they won't see what Yvonne has to say. Yvonne in this case seems to be hoping that CEO calendar invites are rare enough that the invited people will take notice and read the description carefully. Putting her message directly in the calendar invite rather than in a separate email or phone call is a medium choice and a power move. Yvonne saying everyone needs to clear their calendars and show up for this. Finally, we talk about an element of context called exigency or the why now of this event. What is the immediate reason why this message exists? In this case, displeased clients have evidently expressed enough concern that the CEO is stepping in. All of these context details help us learn a bit about the audience that is being addressed. With a calendar invite, the audience might seem rather obvious, but we need to know more than their names and job titles to figure out why they were included. For instance, if only low performers or only one part of the team is included, that might offer more insight into what's gone wrong in this product's development. There's also an insider style to this message that would need interpretation by a particular audience. Clearly, Yvonne is assuming that her audience already knows what top objectives are and what it would mean to reconsider the new department. So if we have an idea of what contextual situation brought this message into existence and who is being addressed, we can start looking at the strategies that Yvonne uses to try to reach her goal. We can start by hypothesizing the purpose and look for strategies that achieve that purpose in a rhetorical analysis. In another episode, we talk more specifically about how we can figure out purpose. We generally look at strategies that bring logos or facts and reason, pathos or emotion, or ethos or authority to a topic. For instance, Yvonne brings facts and reason into this message by not just stating that the clients are mad, she cites specific amounts of revenue and work hours lost. Those are pretty hard to argue with, even if the product team feels that they've moved as fast as they can. She is also relying heavily on the credibility or authority of the clients. Phrases like multiple clients have expressed and they believe are relying on their ethos, not just her own. Finally, the threat to eliminate a new department that is in the works may have a pathos or emotional effect. If there are any team members who aren't pulling their weight and might lose their roles, this may put them on a high alert. With all of these pieces of evidence, we can compile some ideas about the purpose of the message. On its surface, Yvonne's note seems geared to justify setting up a meeting. Upon closer inspection, it seems to be trying to motivate a team that has fallen behind to find a way to work harder or smarter and get back on track. Lastly, it serves as a warning that there will be wider consequences for the department if these objectives aren't met. Then we can use all the evidence we've pulled together to decide whether these purposes are likely to be achieved and how effectively Yvonne will prompt action with this message. If we were writing a formal rhetorical analysis, we'd weigh things that are likely to be effective like citing specific figures for why the project needs to move forward faster against things that maybe weren't so effective, like the vague threat to dismantle the department before Yvonne hears about why the projects have been delayed. We'd talk about characteristics of the audience and how the strategy does or doesn't take them into account. We'd then come to a conclusion on whether Yvonne is likely to see the kind of meeting and resulting turnaround she expects. The key to a rhetorical analysis is that it's both a set of interpretations and informed by evidence. It's not enough to just say, I don't think people like Yvonne, and this is a harsh message, so her writing wasn't effective. In fact, even if people on the product development team grumble, we might realize that this message was quite effective, particularly if the team ends up getting into gear and delivering results as Yvonne requested. While not every rhetorical analysis will explicitly mention all of the areas we evaluated today, Looking at all parts of the rhetorical situation is likely to help us as we work on the invention stage of the writing process for rhetorical analysis of our own. We'll have lots of details to work with, and we can ultimately marshal the best information we have to rationalize why we've interpreted the purpose and its success a certain way. A highly regarded sports commentator will have reasons why she says such and such team had a really disappointing game today other than just that they lost the game. She'll cite the specifics of what made her think of the game as disappointing. 
Similarly, when we slow down and look moment by moment for evidence of what is really going on in the text, we can better understand its success or failure in achieving objectives. We are less likely to trust our snap judgments when we go this in depth, allowing us to make confident decisions if, for instance, we need to respond in some way to a particular communication, like actually talking to Yvonne at that meeting and making a case for ourselves. Our own writing improves when we have this level of detailed evaluation. What's more is that we're likely to emerge with better strategic thinking that we can apply to all our other writing in the future. And that, I'd say, is a slam dunk. Thanks for watching Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition, which is part of the Study Hall Project, a partnership between ASU and Crash Course. If you liked this video and want to keep learning with us, be sure to subscribe. You can learn more about Study Hall and the videos produced by Crash Course and ASU in the links in the description. See you next time.